Hello everyone, Rockwood here, and today we're going to be talking about some of the starter farms I built in my Minecraft survival world. The first is this simple little honey farm. The advantage of this honey farm is that it only requires a few glass bottles. As you can see, there's only a stack and a bit of bottles in there, whereas the other designs, the ones that use the hoppers over the top, require a lot of glass bottles. The reason this one only requires a few is it has item filters underneath that pull out the full honey bottles when they get pulled back into the dispenser after being filled. The drawback of this design, however, is that you have to have space to fill the dispensers. Now, there are two different ways to do this. One, you could tile this indefinitely and just sort of, I guess, crawl underneath here at some point and fill them, I think? Uh, use a slab, yeah, you use a slab for this block here and then you crawl underneath and you just fill them by hand. The other option is you wait until you have enough glass bottles to build the more commonly and readily available design. Uh, or you can leave two blocks of space in between hives and do two hives, two blocks, two hives, two blocks. And then you can build this design and use only the amount of glass bottles you have. Now, I freshly emptied it. As you can see, I got 24 blocks in my inventory. So this little guy does produce a pretty decent amount of honey. Pretty good for a single player, unless you're doing some really, really big builds. But uh, you usually don't need all too many honey blocks, as long as you have a decent slime farm, which I currently sort of do. All right. Now let's move on to the next farm. This is the Tower of Cactus Power, as I like to call it. Shout out to El Mango for his video on how to build this and all the testing he did to definitively prove that this is the most efficient design. Oh, 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 spider, spider, spider jockey. Quick, 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 quick. All right, there we go. And the spider calms down because it's daytime. Very good. Uh, all the testing he did to prove this was the most efficient design. As you can see behind me, there are actually two of these. I built the second one because the first one, the footage that I recorded, Got, uh, got corrupted and I couldn't use it. Not normal corruption, I just didn't know how to use the recording software properly. And I thought, oh, I'll just build a second one because if one cactus farm is good, two cactus farms will be even better. The nice thing about these cactus farms is they are very, very easy and simple to build. As you can see, it's just sand, cactus, fences, glass, water, and slabs. Doesn't matter what kind of slabs you use, you don't even need the glass. I just use it because it's stylish and it prevents wild spawning, but you could just use solid blocks and torches. These uh, these cactus farms produce quite a lot of cactus. I actually just emptied this chest, but you can see some of the remnants in here. It is, it is pretty good. One of these nine layers produces about enough cactus to keep a furnace fully smelting. And one of these furnaces combined with some villager trading is easily enough to take care of all of your early game experience needs. All right, the next farm that I want to talk to you guys about is my melon and pumpkin farm. It's a very simple design. I just wanted to do piston pushes. I didn't want to deal with any hopper minecarts. So it's just a line of hoppers underneath farmland with pistons on a clock that every so often will fire and push the melons and pumpkins into the center where they are collected in this chest down here. As you can see, it's got a pretty decent supply in there. This has been running during the time period that I built these farms. So two to three hours, maybe, maybe four. I don't really have an exact count, but not that long considering how much is actually in there and how small and simple these farms actually are. Uh, this little uh, janky redstone here is not necessary. I just put this on here instead of building a second clock. I just put a little circuit that splits the clock signal there into uh, and, and every other pulse. So this farm activates uh, every second time this farm activates. All right, let's jump into a quick time lapse of building some of this stuff. We're going to hop into a time lapse of the building process behind this melon farm here. So after we do that, I will see you back here for the next one.
Welcome back. As you can see, it was a very, very simple build, except for at the end there when I was running out of glass. That, that, was, uh, that was not good planning on my part. The time lapse that I originally wanted to show you was corrupted, so I won't actually be showing you footage of this tower. But the good news is, is I re-recorded that time lapse of the construction of this tower over here. So, after a quick mining time lapse where I will recover the resources that I use building this one, we'll hop directly into the time lapse where uh, I build this one up for you. And welcome back. If you have any feedback you'd like to leave, please leave a comment below. I'm very interested to see what people think of my videos, and I'm always looking for ways that I can improve. And with that, I think we are done the episode. Thank you for joining me. In our next episode, we are going to be looking at improving, <laughs> improving this bamboo farm because it is not producing nearly enough bamboo for the amount of cactus I want to smelt. In addition, I'll probably be doing a quick time lapse of building a tree farm designed by El Mango, as his tree farms are top quality and he has a very nice starter tree farm that I recently just gained enough honey and slime blocks to begin construction of. And with that, this has been Rockwood. Thank you very much for joining me for my first episode of my survival series. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And with that, I'll see you next time.